Hi there, it's Morris. And I want to talk today about the past, present, and future, which kind of like uh, covers just about everything, right? Um, first of all, your past is made up of your past is made up of your memories right unless we're talking like a police record or um your permanent record in school whatever if there is such a thing um your past is made up of your memories and your memories of the past is imperfect incomplete and probably inaccurate and i hope you agree with that because as you get older things fade away and you remember things that were not quite the way they really happened if you talk to other people and you compare notes um, you probably have uh, changed things so that they're uh, probably a little bit better for you but your past experiences um the unexamined ones that is are still having effect on your present day uh, life and by extension it will have an effect on your future because your future is just a sequence of present present points in time right so if you have something that's kind of like in your past let's say a uh, fear of a situation or something and then you're in a present situation that's similar to that where you have that fear that fear is going to come along with you into present into the present and you're going to uh, be affected by it if you were able to realize that you have a fear but it's not a fear of the present situation but it's a leftover fear from something that happened long ago you have uh, half a chance of uh, disconnecting it so that you're only afraid of the real thing and you've kind of cut off all that other baggage that was that comes along with it so the reason i'm mentioning this is because number one um you have every right to your memories and you have every right to change your memories this is an unusual concept everybody wants to uh, be realistic and uh, uh, be true but your memories by the very nature of them are not true they're not complete because they're only got your point of view anyway you don't have like an aerial view of what really happened in the whole environment you just know from your point of view looking out so by that very nature it's imperfect and then you add some time and you add some other uh, events around it and you're you're pretty uh, not not very accurate and it's not very true but yet it's still affecting you and they're uh, sad and bad and upsetting memories possibly um, the ones that I'm talking about that are subconsciously affecting you. What I suggest you do is take a moment and revisit those memories and actually change them. Why the heck not? They're your memories. So when the bully was uh, beating you up and stealing, knocking you off your trike, well, why not uh, and just change that memory? where uh, you stood up for yourself and you knocked the bully down and you got on your trike and you paddled away. It's not an interesting thought. Why not? They're your memories. Why not take control of them? They're wrong anyway. So uh, why not just improve them? Uh, I'm not talking about uh, lying to other people or uh, coming up with a false resume or school records or something, but just the things that really don't matter to anybody but they still have an effect on you so why don't you just sit down there and change them they're yours anyway uh, i wouldn't suggest this if you were uh, a very traumatic memory because uh, you're going to you're better off leaving well enough alone 
unless you're in therapy and getting it handled professionally and you've got help because you want to only deal with these light things that just will make your life a little bit better. So why not be the hero in your life? Why not be the uh, the one who comes out on top in every situ past situation? And if you did that, just imagine if you did like, a, I don't know, a few a day where you actually were the hero, you actually came out on top and you actually won. Who's going to care anyway? Something happened years ago and it's just to make yourself feel a little better. Why not? So just change those memories. Now you're in a situation that's going to, you know, actually, uh, those past experiences are not going to have such an effect on your uh, present time. So when you're in this present right now, you're just going to be concerned about what's happening right now. And you've kind of like cut off all those bad experiences because you don't have them anymore. They're kind of good experiences. So anytime you're in the present and you're kind of like feeling uneasy or you're feeling apprehensive about something see if there's other stuff that's connected to it and maybe take a minute and go and revisit those old memories and just change them why not rewrite the script it's your movies nobody else is looking so why and they're, they're wrong anyway so why not just improve them <laughs> that's what i say go ahead and just change them so now that'll take care of that kind of like disconnect the effect of these not so good memories and you can um, you can you can have a better present uh, if you got some spare time you might as well go back and revisit some happy times things that uh, just you know made you feel really good times when you were successful when things worked out when you were on top of your game and it was just, just like you were competent and you recall those and just bringing those to the forward foreground, um, they are going to improve your current, present, right now uh, situation. So it's just, um, I think, a good exercise. Why not change the crappy memories that might be having an effect on you right now and uh, recall and, and bring forward if you're going to have memories in your face all the time, why not bring the happy ones, the successful ones, the ones where you're just like, hmm, doing good. So that's um, that's what I'm thinking as far as your past and your present go. And now your future. Uh, your future really depends on having something that's kind of stable. Um, a piece of information or a truth. And you got to work this out for yourself. But if you, if somebody just said, uh, say you're on a boat and you're traveling in the seas, and somebody gives you a map and says, hey, why don't you get us uh, get us home? Here's the map. And the first question you're going to say, well, where are we on this map? Because if you don't know a starting point, you don't know what it's going to take for you to get to where you want to go. Because you could be anywhere on that map, right? You might know where you want to go, but you, you don't have a spot, a starting spot. And that's where this um, this concept is, is the, the not moving thing, which is a truth, a concept of something you hold on to. And it really doesn't matter if it's true or not. Again, it doesn't really matter if it's true. It, all that matters is that it doesn't change. So this is a big part of why people are resistant to the first exercise where you're actually changing the past. Because if you start messing around with the thing that doesn't move, you're going to get uh, you're going to get disoriented and you're not going to have a frame of reference. So you, this is why I mentioned this, this thing, the thing that doesn't move. So here's a thing that doesn't move. It's, it's a nice little rock. So it has a good example. So if you know definitely that what this is, and where it is, it's a statement, say, um, then here's the guy. Uh, you can see a lot of Sheldon. I really think he's cool. So, all right. So, 
as long as you know where that is and it does not move you can go over here you can go over there you can go wherever the heck you want because you are always tethered there it's kind of like um, uh, again you're on a boat and it's a storm uh, but you have a rope around your waist and it's tied to the railing of the ship so the waves come and the wind blows and the ship's going up and down but you're tied to the rope so you're not going anywhere you know where you are it's a whole lot safer feeling than if you were out there without the rope and you had nothing stable to hang on to so it's the not moving thing that is going to determine your progress so that's the point and you have to keep that your starting point um, uh, that truth in 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 mind uh, people say um, oh I'm a success now but I remember back in the day when you know it was poor and I only ate peanut butter and there was uh, you know yeah, I lived in a one-room tenement with 16 people uh, but that's their stable unmoving point and now they have that frame of reference and they can go on with their uh, to bigger things as opposed to being lost and really not knowing where they came from or what they're doing or where they're going so you can't know where you're going you can't have a future in mind if you don't have a starting point a frame of reference something that is defined so make a statement that is true that doesn't change and it could be just like uh, this is what I do every day uh, something that you uh, commit to um, and then from there you can go on this way or that way and the wind blows you and you're actually got something stable something true to hang on to in your life so that's um that's kind of like the future but really all you got is now and so this is kind of like the power of now you can't be looking back you can't be looking ahead you need to know what you're doing now and any action that you do today is the only action that you got so um, you have to you have to kind of like be aware that there really isn't a past and there really isn't a future there's only a now and then the rest is just somebody's opinion All right so that's that's the moral of the story do something now because now is all you really have okay um yeah i could talk about your unconscious versus your conscious but your your mind isn't really split it's just like in two halves they teach you this and, you know freud has the unconscious mind and then there's the conscious mind and the id and the ego and all these divisions and this is kind of a western kind of philosophy where there are lines and definitions that are or the lines are defined so your mind has these chunks and they don't really they're kind of next to each other and information goes around and around like a circuit board but your mind isn't really like that the eastern and Jewish tradition is that a person is a whole being and they don't have actually compartmentalized pieces of logic and then a section over here for emotion and then a um, section over here for conscious and unconscious there's not these divisions and little pockets of components in your head your your actual whole being from top to bottom and it's all related and interrelated and uh, there's not these fine divisions so that's really the way it is uh, classical western stuff is all about um, trying to uh, I guess explain things um, in a in a very black and white kind of way uh, but the oriental eastern Jewish traditions or that it's your, your whole being uh, and everything's related so just talking about you as a person 
Um, there's things that you are not aware of and things you are aware of. So that's kind of like where the unconscious and conscious goes from. Things you're not aware of are, is, is really what's affecting you and you don't know it. And the things you are aware of, you have control over and you are um, able to do things with. So if you, that's why I want to go back to this, uh, this idea of changing your memories and the outcome of your memories. Because as you do that, you'll discover that there's stuff affecting you that you really didn't realize. So it's a fun exercise. And uh, uh, while you're doing this, always uh, end off after you feel good. Don't end when you, if you feel uh, sad or stressed or apprehensive. And uh, they're your memories, so why the heck not change them? So there. So change your memories. And uh, then you'll have a wonderful past, and that will affect your current situation. And then your whole bunch of string together, strung together current situations is what makes up your future. And then you'll be able to look back from your future to your past and say, I have a nice present. <laughs> However that works. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching. And be sure to click the button down below and subscribe and like and comment and uh, share this video around. And uh, go to the, um, the link down below, which is selfimprovementmethods.com slash go and get yourself a free ebook. And um, I think we're still doing the uh, organized mind. So, uh, yeah, you should find that there. And um, thanks a lot. And make it a good day. Bye.